Hi friends! I'm actually going to slip my mask off. I am by myself in this room, so I want to make sure you can hear me just fine. Um, but I'm so excited to show you how to paint your own Harry Potter house robes. Now, I'm Ravenclaw, so I painted mine the Ravenclaw colors, but you can choose to do Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, Slytherin, or Ravenclaw, or even just the generic Hogwarts colors. Um, so that is up to you. And I hope you enjoy uh, our painting, and I hope you come back for more of our programs here at the Gaston County Public Library. All right, let's get started. So today we are painting our Hogwarts house um, robes, and I painted Ravenclaw because I am in Ravenclaw house, but you can paint Slytherin, Hufflepuff, Gryffindor, or Ravenclaw. Um, so this is the one I did, and as you can see, I did not actually paint the crest that is shown on your uh, picture, the reference picture, um, and you can do either uh, with or without. I did not, and I won't be for this video, um, but if you would like to do this crest, uh, you just follow the same steps that I'm about to show you uh, about getting the image on your canvas. So before we start, let's go over our materials. So you should have a canvas. This is an 8x10 canvas, I believe. Uh, it's a hard canvas, not a soft canvas. You should have your reference image. You should have your paints. So I have black, blue, white, and gold because that is the colors of Ravenclaw House. And then you should have a paintbrush. Um, your kit, if you got a kit, uh, probably had one paintbrush in it, um, but you are more than welcome to use your own paintbrushes or however many paintbrushes you want. Um, I'm going to have three with me, uh, maybe four depending on uh, how I'm feeling. Um, I've got some paper towels to wipe off my brushes when I change colors in paint, and a thing of water um, to put my paintbrushes in and clean them off after each paint. And then you should have a pencil. Um, and you're probably wondering, how am I going to get this image onto this canvas without freehanding it? Well, I'm going to show you. So let's move that aside real fast. So you're going to take your image and you're going to turn it over on its um, back. And you're going to take your pencil and you're just going to start coloring like this. And it might take a minute since it, you are coloring the whole image and you want to press hard, not tearing the paper. You don't want to tear the paper, but you want to get as much graphite onto your image as you can possibly get. And you want to make sure you color the whole image Or at least the image that has lines you are going to trace because that is what we are going to do after we have finished coloring the back of our paper we are tracing it onto our canvas and like I said I'm actually not going to uh, be putting the image the crest onto um, our canvas so I'm not even going to color over that but that is a your choice kind of thing and if you want to have the crest on your image, then this is the point where you would need to cover uh, that part of the image with graphite. As you can see, I've left areas empty because there's nothing to trace over. Um, so, make sure one last time you've got all of your lines, everything you want. Anything that you want to transfer onto your image, you need to make sure there is graphite on that part of the picture. Okay, I think I've gotten all of it. Let's bring this back. And you want to center your image on uh, the canvas. All right, I think that's good. And then you're going to take your pencil and just trace the lines like so. And like I said, any line or any part of the image that you want on your canvas, you need to color on the back with your pencil 
and then trace over that line. If you, do, if you don't, it will not trace onto your canvas. I'm actually going to be tracing the lines in the uh, um, tie because I like where those lines are, but it's up to you. You can freehand those if you would like. Don't forget your top of the tie. Now I'm going to come back down and do the rows. And then once you're done, you lift it up and voila, you have an image on your picture and you didn't even have to freehand it. I don't know if you can see any of that. Um, at this point, you can, if you would like, trace over and make any lines darker. But be aware that any dark line that you uh, trace over will be harder to paint and cover with paint. So I'm going to leave it light and I'm not going to actually trace over anything um, because I think my uh, lines are dark enough. In fact, I'm even going to erase some lines that I don't want or are too dark for my liking. Okay, so your next step, we are going to take the white and we're gonna paint um, from the top down, uh, the white collar and um, chest of your picture. Um, I think I'm going to use this brush uh, because it's smaller and I feel like I have more control. So you just get some white on your um, paintbrush and start painting. Like so. And I do this method simply because it's like I've um, colored. Um, it's like a coloring book image. And once it's on your canvas, it's like you're just coloring it in with paint. Alright, so I'm just painting this white. I'm going to move my image out of the way. Um, make sure you paint your edges uh, if you're not going to uh, put it in a frame uh, because then it's not as neat. So make sure you paint your edges. I guess it doesn't matter if you don't want to paint your edges that are white, but I'm going to. I'm going to move on to the chest part of the shirt. And like I said, I guess you do not have to paint this part white if you really don't want to. However, I think that painting it white makes it look neater and more uh, and cleaner and just finished. So, I'm going to paint it white. And it's okay if you go into the tie a little bit or the rose, you're going to paint over that. That's why I'm starting with this. I'm also starting with this um, to make it easier uh, on me so I can put my hand on this part on the bottom part of the canvas so I'm not getting paint everywhere. I like to start from the top down just for that reason. And it's okay if 
your white from your collar goes into the white on your um, chest part of your canvas because you're going to go back and outline it in black like that. I'm actually going to put my, this big brush down and move to a smaller brush so I can get some of these edges. Because while I can paint over them, I like to um, try and get as close as possible. Less work in the end. I'm going to pick up my big brush again and go back to this side. Now, if you're like me, you move your canvas around constantly. And that's okay. You want to move your canvas around. You want to get as close as you can to those details. Um, without, you know, it's okay to get messy, but sometimes you just want to not be messy. So I like to move my canvas. I'm actually going to uh, put my big paintbrush in the water and clean it off, or start cleaning it off, and move to my smaller brush to get the final white details in the uh, white shirt. Okay, I think that's pretty good. And don't worry about smudges, because I mean, I have, I have it all over my hands. That's okay. This is going to be black, and you can paint over it. Um, if you are worried about it, you can clean it off with water before you move on, or try and wipe it off with a um, paper towel. So, we're just going to move on. Next, I'm actually going to start on the tie. Um, you can uh, switch colors back and forth if you want to. Um, I'm not. I'm going to work on one color at a time. And... I'm going to work on the blue first. I'm going to start from the top and, work, and come down to the blue. And go down to the bottom, sorry. You want to clean off your brush. If you're using the same brush. And um, wipe it off to a point so you can get as clean of a brush as you can. And I'm going to load up my brush with the blue, turn my canvas so I can get close, and start. Now with the blue, it is darker than the yellow, which means it'll be harder to cover up. So try and be as close as you can to the lines, so that way you're not having to let the image dry all the way and cover any mess ups with white. Um, and how I chose blue was because I based it off of this image right here, starting with uh, just tra trading out the blue for the red. Um, but I guess you could start with the corresponding color of your house if you really wanted to. These are your robes. This is your artwork. You can make it anything you want. Art doesn't have to be perfect. It, in fact, art is unique. Every piece of artwork is unique. So I encourage you to even change up this image if you want. Okay. I do try and do light coats so that way it's an even coat all the way across, and if I need to, I can go back and do a second coat. Okay. 
Sorry about that. And I like to use my image as a reference for this. Um, so like I like you can see the uh, red is right here and then it goes to red and in the big one. Red and red in the big one. So I'm gonna do blue. I'm actually going to turn my canvas some more so I can get close. And you want to get as straight as lines as you possibly can. So I'm actually going to change brushes um, to this bigger brush. Uh, because I feel like I can um, paint a little bit better uh, with it. But you need to feel comfortable with your paintbrush. So if you feel more comfortable with a smaller paintbrush, please continue to use that. If you feel comfortable using a bigger brush, then by all means, pick up a bigger brush and paint. I have water on my paintbrush, which I don't want in my paint. Okay. I have one more stripe for my blue, and then we can move on to our second color. Okay, so while that first coat dries, I'm going to move on to my second coat, which is going to be the gold. Now, some people argue that Ravenclaw's colors are not blue and gold, but in the books, they are. In the movies, they are blue and silver, but I'm going to stick with the book colors, um, but if you want the blue and silver Ravenclaw colors, then you are more than welcome to paint the gold silver. Most likely the gold will definitely need at least two coats. And that is okay. Lighter colors have lighter pigment which means more coats to cover up um, and make an even coat. And it's okay if you get some of the gold into the blue. The blue is easily uh, painted over. So while that dries, um, we're going to move on to our blue. And I know this may look yellow to you, but I promise it is gold. Um, and the colors may even be bronze, but I 
had gold, so I'm using gold. Um, next, we're moving on to the blue. Uh, I'm actually going to use my big brush to um, get the blue onto this part of the row, uh, like this one. There is blue uh, on the collar, so to speak, of the robe. Done. So you're gonna dip your um, paintbrush in the blue, or the red, or green, or yellow. I hope everybody is doing all right and is enjoying this. I especially like Harry Potter. Um, I'm kind of ashamed I haven't actually read all of the books. I've only read to the fourth one, um, but I love them and the movies were pretty good. Uh, what was your favorite movie? If you're seeing this, maybe comment down below telling us what your favorite movie or what your favorite book was. Personally, my favorite book was Prisoner of Azkaban, and the movie, my favorite movie was Prisoner of Azkaban. Um, I really liked Sirius Black, and I even re I, I loved the fact that the book had so much magic explored that the I felt that the other books just didn't explore. There was time turners and um, how that worked and there was, you know, the night bus and the magical creatures and there was just so much to that book that I enjoyed that I feel like I did not get as much in the other novels. Don't forget, paint your sides. All right, now that that's done, we're gonna let that dry. And we're gonna move on to our black, our final color. Make sure you get all the paint out of your paintbrush. Okay, so I've got my black and my paintbrush is dry and clear of most of the paint. Um, I guess it doesn't matter if you get a little bit of blue in that black because it is black so it's not going to show the colors like if you got blue in your yellow, um, which I kind of did up here. If you can see, it's kind of green. Um, but that's okay. I can always paint over it once it dries. So now you're going to move on to your black. And just... Get, I'm getting bigger uh, globs of paint on my paintbrush so I can cover more area. But you are more than welcome to do smaller uh, amounts of paint on your paint brush. Um, it's all up to you. Like I said, it's your artwork. And you need to make it look how you want it to look. You are the one who has to look at it and admire it. Again, paint those edges. And I'm actually going to turn it so that way I can see more of it. Like 
to finish my piece. And that involves painting door edges. Okay, so I have finished. All right, so now I've finished the painting, kind of. I have finished the first coat of all the colors. At this point, you want to let it dry completely and then go back over any colors that you think need a second coat. So the blue and my blue and my yellow will definitely need a second coat. So we're going to let it dry and then we'll co I'll come back in a few minutes once it's dried and we can uh, go over our second coat and do any final details. Okay, I've let it dry and now I'm going to go back and do a uh, second coat. So I'm gonna start with the blue that's what I started with last time. See how much better that looks with a second coat. You could have left it without a second coat if you really wanted to, but I think, and I hope you agree, that it looks better with a second coat. And like I said earlier, if you get any on the white or the black, you can always just let it dry and paint over it. Most mistakes can and will be fixed by letting it dry and painting over it. I'm going to move to a smaller brush to get this part up here that I missed, if you can see it. Um, I wanted to do that with a smaller brush because it is a little bit more detailed. Alright. I'm going to clean off my big brush again so then I can move on to the um, yellow or gold I mean and it might need um, a little bit more cleaning if you haven't cleaned out your um, water and since that is the case with me I'm probably, I am actually going to just use this smaller brush. And a perk of using these smaller brushes is that you can get close to your lines. Like I can get close to this blue and not really have to worry about getting um, yellow or gold in the blue. But you have to be comfortable with your paintbrush. I think the second coat is already making this picture look a hundred times better. Don't you? And then 
I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to try and get it close. You can kind of see uh, this. Come on. There we go. You can kind of see that it's not quite perfect. And in this case, you could just um, wait till it dries and go over that with blue. Um, or you can leave it. It's up to you. Alright. Now that I have finished the second layer of the gold, I'm going to move on to the final color, which is black. Um, I'm going to use my big brush again and do a second coat. Not all, the, not all black um, painted canvases need a second coat. Um, I felt like mine did because it looks like I missed some spaces or um, depending on the canvas, the canvas probably soaked up some of that paint. Um, so it's always a good idea to make sure that if it does need a second coat, you give it a second coat. So you want it to look as good as possible. So at this point, I would take a look at your edges just to make sure that they are covered, but you won't you don't necessarily need to do a second cover on those on the edges because no one really sees it. Um, they just see it long enough to notice if there is color or if there isn't. Um, but so remember, always paint your edges. Okay. So now that the second coats are done. If you want to let it want to let it dry, now is the time to let it dry, and then you can move on to the black outline, like I've done. And the black outline, um, you can use a sharpie. Uh, however, with a sharpie, you need it to be kind of a fresh black sharpie, um, so that way as much ink can will transfer to the canvas. Otherwise. You will need to use your small brush, if you have one, a small detail brush. Um, if you do not have one, um, try not to use the Dollar Tree version ones because those are not very good brushes and they're not going to give you a good straight line. Um, you can use any small brush though that looks like this or smaller if you can find one um, and, and or a Sharpie. Uh, I think I used both uh, on my first canvas that I made, um, but you can use either. Um, so I'm going to let it dry, and I'll see you back when it's finished drying. Okay, so um, I have let it dry uh, for the most part, almost completely. Um, and you want to do that so that way you're not mixing paint. Uh, and I think you can see it's a little, little wet still. See that gleam, that gleam and um, glare. But it's fairly dry enough around the edges that I'm not too worried about getting uh, paint mixed together. So uh, I'm going to start outlining my color, my my colors in black. So on my image, I only did the collar the outline of the tie and then the top of the collar of the robe. You, if you want, can also outline the lines in the tie. I'm not going to do that, but if you would like to do that, then by all means, do that. So I'm going to get um, just enough on my brush to cover it. You don't want too much, but you also don't want too little. Too little means you're going to have to keep going back over it, and it won't be as thin and crisp of a line. 
uh, too much, you're going to have too thick of a line. So you kind of want just enough on there. Okay, so, so I'm going to start by turning my canvas. <laughs> and I'm actually going to um, follow the lines on my image um, and do the collar. See, like, see that? Well, I had just enough paint on there to get that whole line without having to go back. The more times you go back, the thicker the line's going to be, and the less and less the less uh, crisp it's going to end up. But like I said earlier, this does not have to be perfect. It just has to be good enough that you like it. See how I didn't have enough paint? All right. See, there's a lot of paint right here. This is, it's all piled up. You don't want that because it's not going to dry right. So you're going to need to spread that out if that happens. It will make your paint line thicker. But you know, in the end, that's okay. I'm going to turn my canvas so I can feel, uh, get a better uh, angle. Okay. And straight lines are hard. It takes a little bit of practice. Um, and patience. Don't you don't want to go too fast. You just want to go at the right speed, pressing down just enough. You don't you want you want to make sure that the brush doesn't fan out. And when I say fan out, I mean I'm going to use the back of this um, piece of paper. Right here, see how my brush fans out like that? You do not want that because like I said, it's going to make the line thicker. You want to put very little pressure to make the line. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm going to go back and I'm going to do the tie. Um, and this is a little tricky since my, my, paint, my canvas is a little still a little wet, which is why you do want to let it dry completely. But you're just going to do like you did before. And do light pressure. And go around the edge of that top half of the tie. Now I'm going to do the rest of the tie and this is going to take multiple lines I guess you could say or parts and that's fine. You just don't want short lines. And it's okay if you mess up. It's okay if it's not straight. It's okay if it's too thick. It is okay. Because like I said, any mistake can and will be fixed with a simple letting it dry and painting over it. And this technique might not be perfect. You may find a better way at home to line your image. See, that's not perfect, but that's okay. And something I've learned 
over the um, last few years is that if you mess up, and you mess up bad, stop touching it. Like, I could easily keep going over this line till it's perfect. But you don't want to do that. And the reason you don't want to do that is because the more you mess with it, the more it's going to mess up. It's I find that it's always better that if you mess up and you can't fix it within once or twice of touching it, stop. Let it dry completely. Don't let it dry if, if it's still until it's still gleaming. Dry completely. It needs to be matte. You need to be able to touch it and feel it like this and come up without any paint on your hands. Let it dry completely. Redo it. That is the only way you're gonna be able to fix it. And that's okay. Don't be in too much of a rush. Um, anything, like I said, can be fixed. You know, like Bob Ross always said, N never mistakes, just happy little accidents. And now I'm going over the top of the robes. You don't need to go over the bottom of the robe, and when I say bottom, I mean this part, because that's already technically lined with black. So I'm not gonna waste paint and do that. But if you have the um, want to do that, then please, please go right ahead. So if you'll notice, right here, I did a little curve, and that's where the uh, robes would fold over, or button over, and um, I wanted to show that. You don't have to if you don't want to, I did. Okay, so at this point, um, I, you can be done. Um, or you can follow the, um, some of the shading uh, and make it a little bit more shaded. However, I like mine the way it is. Um, and I want to let it dry completely. Uh, and after it's dried, you can go back and fix any mistakes or uh, add anything. Um, but you do want to let it dry completely. And I'm just covering a part that I missed before it dries um, but the final final thing you want to do after you've painted it you've let it dry and you fixed any mistakes or um, problems or you've added things or you know any of that you want to put your signature my signature is just my first initial a P but your signature can be anything. It can be cursive. It can be um, your first, middle, and last initial. It could just be your last initial. It could be your full name. It could You could write out your full name if you want. Uh, one thing you need to be cautious of is this is a painting that you want the whole focus to be on the painting, not on your signature. So you don't want it to be too big but you want it to be noticeable so that when people see it, they know exactly who did it. Because this, in the end, is your painting um, and you need to be proud of it. So I'm gonna use blue. You can use red or yellow or gold or green to do your signature. You can do white, you can do any color you want. And it can either be on the right side or the left side. I always put mine on the right side so I'm just going to do a quick signature. And I'm done. That is how you do the Hogwarts House robes canvas painting. 
I hope you enjoyed this um, little activity and I hope you will join us for our few tank programs.